Hello, everyone, and welcome to Inside Golf. I'm Harry Donahue. Over the years, Inside Golf has touched on a lot of topics, courses, players, rules, lessons, and maintenance. Well, today, we're going to take a look and profile a golf course architect. William Flynn was born in New England, but his best work was accomplished after he arrived in Philadelphia early in the 20th century. By the time he died in the mid-40s, William Flynn had designed or redesigned more than 80 courses. He worked on Marion with Hugh Wilson. And when Wilson laid out Cobbs Creek, yes, William Flynn was there as well. Several of his designs rank in the top 100 of golf courses in the U.S. Earlier, Coming up, uh, his, the life his, and work of William Flynn, one of the game's greatest architects. It's design. next on Inside Golf. The 26th season of Inside Golf is presented by Destination Monco Golf. Your next golf getaway is in Valley Forge in Montgomery County, Pennsylvania. Visit valleyforge.org. By the First Tee Greater Philadelphia. The First Tee not only helps young men and women become better golfers, but most important, better people. Get involved. Visit firstteephiladelphia.org. By the Philadelphia Association of Golf Course Superintendents, a community of professionals enhancing the game of golf since 1925. Make sure you thank your golf course superintendent today. By the Golf Association of Philadelphia, GAF, celebrating amateur golf since 1897. By Jersey Man and Philly Man Magazine, a digital publication and private business network. Read the current issue free at jerseymanmagazine.com. By the Haverford Trust Company. For life's must-haves, there's Haverford. And by Inside Golf's partner since 1998, the Philadelphia PGA section, the experts in the game and business of golf. Golf is the great equalizer. For many, this journey is an escape from reality, a chance to be part of a team, a career opportunity. PGA Reach impacts lives through golf by lifting people up, giving them hope, and sending them down an alternate path that they never saw coming. With PGA Reach Philadelphia, as in life and in golf, the most important shot you take is the next one. Welcome back to Inside Golf. We're at Marion and in the clubhouse, the library, talking to Wayne Morrison. Wayne Morrison is a Marion member, but better than that, folks, he is an expert on William Flynn. Now, a lot of you may not have ever heard that name before, but William Flynn was part, Wayne, of the Philadelphia School of Golf Course Architects. Maybe not as well known as some of the other people in that little illustrious group like Tillinghast and Crump and who else? George Thomas. Hugh Wilson. Hugh Wilson, since we're at Marion. And Franklin Meehan. Franklin Meehan. But um, that was a different time, right? These were gentlemen who shared, first of all, an interest in golf, second of all, golf course design, and they shared a lot of the information and worked together on various courses. In Flynn's case, first of all, his background, he came from New England, right? Mm -hmm. He was a pretty good golfer himself. In fact, he beat somebody that everybody's heard his name, if they have anything to do with golf, in a junior event. And who would that be? Francis We Met. Francis We Met. He of the greatest game ever played. Not against Mr. <laughs> Flynn, but uh, maybe well, not a celebrated in Flynn's victory. world it probably was. Well, right? Flynn was a little older than Francis We Met, and he, he generally beat him in, in, in competitions. They were the two best junior golfers in, in Massachusetts. Right, so we had a little history on the course. And then he comes down here to Philadelphia to work here at Marion, not as a designer, but he was out there on the maintenance crew. Yeah, he, well, he, he had designed a course in, uh, prior to coming to Marion. William Fl uh, Flynn's brother-in-law, Frederick Pickering, was probably the most celebrated golf course construction guy in America at the time. And he was hired by the club to build the golf course. So he brought Flynn down from a course that he was designing and, and Pickering built in Hartwellville, Vermont for a, a very um, illustrious family up there, the Plunkett family, and uh, came down here to work on the crew to, to build the golf course. Um, I, it was a different era back then, but uh, 
Flynn's brother-in-law had a serious drinking problem. He was let go. Flynn did something to, uh, you know, to uh, impress Mr. Wilson. You, Mr. Wilson. They became very close. It was more like a father, it was almost like a father-son father-son relationship. relationship yeah. yeah. And uh, they worked together on uh, in in um, when new land was found on uh, at the East Course or found available, and built holds 10 through 13 over again and uh, also on the west course so they were they were very close they worked they owned a course together it's now green valley country club used to be marble hall it was the first public golf right course ridge pike exactly they they were co-owners of it how about that and uh wilson helped flynn at uh, catansett a, a wonderful golf course in southern massachusetts and um some okay. changes at north hills they worked yeah. together on I know if you if you add them all up, either that he designed, or I guess like restored or redesigned, the list is over close to a hundred, really, right? Eighty something. Uh, Eighty something, yeah. Right. Which was which was pretty. And small. so many in the Philadelphia area. Seventeen courses in the Philadelphia area. And they're all iconic courses, right? Yeah. The, Huntington Valley, Rolling Green, Philadelphia Country Club, Philadelphia Country Club, manufacturers, right. Lancaster, Lehigh, Atlantic City Country Club. A little bit here at Marion. Yep, yeah, and he had a lot going for him because you, Wilson, saw in William Flynn, uh, I want to call it uh, a triple threat. He was an agronomist, mm -hmm. a, a well-known agronomist. In fact, he used to give, what, uh, symposiums up at Penn State? He was lectured at Penn State. Hugh Wilson was, a, you know, an agronomist. Of, he, he put a lot of so time So they had that in common. In turf. He was in construction. Mm-hmm. With Toomey and Flynn. Right. And there weren't too many bulldozers in those days, right? I don't know how they did what they did back in the horses and in scrapers. The 20s. But uh, so he was involved in construction. And then he got into design in a big, big way. Yeah. And, I mean, he was a real find for you, Wilson. The, uh, on a personal level and a professional level, certainly. And, and think back in, in that era, uh, Flynn was, you know, he came from modest means. He married very well, but. Uh, he came from modest means. Hugh Wilson, George Crump, Thomas. They were these were uh, uh, Tillinghast. They were, uh, you know, sporting elite and uh, they were heavyweights. And, and, yeah, they, they were, were connected. They were elite. Right. And he fit in really well with them. He lived in Wynwood, worked right here in uh, in this area around Marion, where he set up shop with uh, Mr. Toomey, who was his partner. The more the construction end. Toomey, if you don't mind, Toomey was, uh, he, he worked on the grounds as an engineer for the, for the Marion Cricket Club. Okay. They put, you know, he, he, he matched uh, Flynn's, uh, they, they, they meshed really well together. Toomey ran the business side of things and ran the uh, construction arm. And if I'm not mistaken, Huntington Valley, one of their designs, mm -hmm. they have the Toomey 9 and they have the Flynn 9. Yeah, even though Toomey never Valley. designed anything. <laughs> but really? No, oh, but he put his name on it. They put his name they on put it. His name for on a little, it. well, that, that that was really interesting. For a lot of time, a lot of period of time, people they didn't know who does. You know, they didn't really record or sure. take take much notice of who designed what. In fact, if you look at the Marion history, they they don't really sell. It's hard to tell who did what when. We want to get into that when we come back. Okay. Wayne Morrison. He wrote a book. You ready? Two thousand five hundred and forty-five pages, and. Just today, prior to coming here, he added a few more pages when he found out some more history of William Flynn. When's it going to end? I don't think Wayne even knows. We'll be back to talk about William Flynn next on Inside God. So, what do you want to do today? Today, I want to run. I want to ski. Thank you. I want to see a show. <laughs> I want to play. I want to eat. Like a lot. I want to sleep in a hotel. Can we do all that? We can do all that and more. Welcome back. Inside Golf continues. We're in the library at Marion East with Wayne Morrison because uh, Marion East was the first golf course that William Flynn, the esteemed golf course architect, really got involved with when he came to Philadelphia from the Boston area way back when, when this place was under construction. And he went from here. Boy, did he ever. Um, 
let's talk a little bit about one of the nicknames he had, and I, I guess he gave it to himself, I think, Wayne, the nature faker. What's that all about? So uh, Flynn's daughter, Connie Lagerman, was, she, I guess, and I have a great picture of her sitting here looking at her father's uh, architectural plans at this very table. Uh, she, uh, was, she, she learned to really appreciate the fact that he was a, a golf architect. When she was in elementary school, they had a fa you know, father come to school and talk about the career. And she said, I wish he was anything but an architect. I wish he was a salesman. Really? Uh, the, yeah. Uh, but look at now architects today, the Gil Hanses and the Tom Dokes and the Corn Crenshaws, they're like rock stars. Sure. And, and that's the other thing. When Flynn and Dillingast and um, Crump, all those gentlemen were designing golf courses, famous venues, as history would prove, they didn't get a lot of money for that, right? In well, fact, if they, if they got anything. Well, it, they, that, you brought a great point up, Harry. You know, if they were involved in golf in any way, and designing golf courses was considered, they, they would lose their amateur status. So they didn't want to receive so Hugh Wilson money. was never going to be a, a professional architect. You know, there was a story that he was going to get into business with Flynn. They collaborated, but he did it from a very, you know, from an amateur standpoint. He didn't want to lose his amateur standing. Right. Uh, George Crump was, uh, you know, obviously he, he built his own golf course, so that wasn't a, a paid gig. But Tilling has lost his uh, amateur standing for a while. And uh, George Thomas never took a... And it never took money for his, for his design. Work. How about that? You know, when you, when you uh, look at uh, stuff from way back when, like the 20s, and uh, they'd say, well, they got 100 hours, which in today's uh, economic world would be worth uh, 10,000 hours. Well, zero is worth zero. Yeah, that's, right? that's so right. There's no comparison. Uh, let's talk about, though, his involvement with famous venues. And we, we talked a little bit about what he's done in Philadelphia, but he, his, his range went up and down the East Coast. And it stretched out as far as Colorado. For instance, Cherry Hills, mm -hmm. which was a U.S. Open site uh, that Arnold Palmer won. And uh, also Country Club at Denver. Denver Country Club, yeah. He did that. You brought up a really good, er, good point earlier, Harry, that uh, his, his, you know, he was the trifecta. He was construction, uh, agronomics, Agronomy. and design. Well, uh, he, he was a one-stop shop. So when, when clubs would, would reach out to the USGA and say, you know, we're looking for a a golf architect, what do you think? They would say, you know, there's a guy that does it all. So Flynn got a lot of uh, jobs, not so much because he did uh, courses that a lot of people went to, because most of them were very private, very, you know, the elite courses in certain areas. And he didn't do very many um, resort courses. But, he, but the USGA, his, his agronomic research, turf research with, with Hugh Wilson, got him a lot of commissions. And he redid Shinnecock Hills, which was in, in, in my opinion, I wanted to save that till the end, but go ahead, tell oh, us what he did there. He, well, uh, there was going to be a highway built, and uh, so they were going to lose land. Uh, so they, so they brought Flynn in to redesign the golf course. It was originally a C, well, it was originally a Willie Davis, then Willie Dunn, then C.B. McDonald. But the, the 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 balls and clubs and things like that were making a lot of courses obsolete. They were too short. So Flynn came in and redid the entire golf course at Shinnecock Hills. Um, it, interesting, in 1927, Flynn wrote an article saying that if we don't do something about the ball, we're going to have to design 7,500 or 8,000-yard golf <laughs> Little courses. Little did he know. He was, he was right on on that one. And uh, so, he, so he, he revamped uh, the, uh, Shinnecock Hills, turned it into something that was, uh, uh, you know, away from C.B. McDonald's, uh, idea that was template holes, where he would replicate fe certain features from old world courses. Um, and uh, Flynn and Hugh Wilson and others really took golf architecture in a new direction, an American direction, with uh, courses that fit in naturally with the land. Right. So we, which we could talk a little bit about what, what, what his monarch, what he called himself. And well, yeah, when it didn't, it, we, they just faked it. Yeah, right. <laughs> and made it look like it was natural. That, that's, so, and that's an art. So, don't leave. We'll be back in just a moment to talk more about William Flynn, thanks to Wayne Morrison, but we'll also have a break. And then, our teed off panel. And That's Andy next here on Inside Golf. Throwing some money into it, and those clubs are affluent enough to throw, throw the rest. And welcome back, Inside Golf. 
continues with our teed off panel. Today we are assembled once again at Lulu Country Club in Upper Dublin. And for more information on Lulu, go to their website, lulucc.com. With us, president of GAP in his third year as the president of the Golf Association of Philadelphia, Oscar Mestri. Good to see you, Oscar. Great to see you, Harry. From Lulu, always our host. Whenever we can't get John Rusk, we get Step down. The to, next uh, best thing, I guess, it's Jim Sullivan. Thanks for Sully. Me, Harry. And from myphillygolf.com, Joe Logan. We're doing a show today here on Inside Golf about the architect William Flynn. Did a lot of work around the Philadelphia area, and he also had some opinions about what the USGA should do when it comes to holding its major events, like the U.S. Open or the U.S. Uh, Women's Open the amateur championship, and now I have to keep in the context, Oscar, this was back in the 30s and 40s when Flynn was doing his work here in right. Philadelphia. But he suggested that the USGA should develop its own sort of rota, similar to what they do at the Open Championship in the UK, and maybe develop their own courses for these events, like develop them, maintain them, control them any way they want to the nth degree, and you'd only play those six, seven courses. What do you think about that idea? Now, it never got to that point. I, I, feel, I feel we've gotten there over, over time. Without them without, without actually them specifically. developing courses. Yeah, I mean, I think the commitment that the USGA has made to anchor golf courses, anchor facilities, Pinehurst, Pebble, Oakmont, Marion. Wingfoot. You know, Wingfoot. I mean, Shanecock. You know, those are going to get the, the tournament uh, uh, more than their fair share, right? Beyond that, and, and, and the USGA is throwing some money into it, and those clubs are affluent enough to throw, throw the rest. But I think a lot of it had to do, in his, in his historical perspective, was the ability to maintain those golf courses to a degree, you know, where those golf courses weren't, in, in general, in times, I mean, you think about uh, ongoing uh, budgets, I mean, where are budgets going, maintenance budgets at golf courses, up and up and up and up. Crazy. Yeah, so right. so the, those, the, the spend wasn't there back then, so the quality, the technology wasn't there. Right. The mowers weren't, were, weren't able to you know, get down to the nth degree they're getting to now. Right. So I feel like it's a, it's a, it was a probably ahead of his time in the thoughts, and it's where we've gotten to today. So I think it's almost a moot point now. Jim, do you think uh, the players of today would go for something like that, like seeing a, a short list as opposed to where it is now in terms of a, a longer, lengthier list? I mean, if you're looking for the player's opinion, I think they love familiarity. So I think that would be beneficial for them. And, and if you're going in this, um, in that the maintenance kind of direction, not to say you definitely get standardization because the climate in California is going to be different than Long Island and, and in the Pittsburgh area are all different. But if, if say, an entity, USGA or whoever is controlling, they're going to try to have it fairly equal across the board, bunker sand, rough depth and thickness, their, co their goals will be very similar. I think the players would love it, um, you know, in my, in my opinion. I don't know that it's realistic, you know, but, it, it, you know, I, I see where they're coming from. Sure. Uh, as I mentioned, we're doing a show on Inside Golf with Wayne Morrison, who is probably Mr. William Flynn when it comes to the history of Flynn and the courses he designed. Philadelphia, a big part of that, uh, Joe, beyond Philadelphia, of course, as well. But do you have a, a one or two or three favorite Flynn courses that you yeah. played and will say, boy, I love when I play these courses. Uh, well, your old course, yeah. Huntington Valley, would be right at the top of the list. Yeah. Manufacturers across the street, again. Uh, Rolling Green. Uh, one of the ones I think gets overlooked or forgotten sometimes is Green Valley. Not a bad, that's a flat right. course. Nice. And also Lancaster Country Club where they played the Women's Open and it's coming back. Uh, all of those are, there's not a bad Flynn course out there. I mean, and the one thing about him was uh, not only did he design the entire 18 hole layout, mm -hmm. but he also helped in the case of like Marion, Pine Valley because George Crump passed away before Pine Valley was finished, and William Flynn, who was uh, part of that Philadelphia you know, School of Golf Course Architecture, finished like three or four holes at Pine Valley that a lot of people don't realize. How about you, Oscar? What's your favorite Flynn course? 
I mean, so I, I'd piggyback on, on what Joe said. I'd say uh, Lehigh Country Club is, is, another, Lehigh. is another great facility you don't think of, you know, in, 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 like, like, uh, like Lancaster. Philadelphia Country Club. Oh, yeah. Philadelphia Country Club. Uh, but, you know, I mean, I think that I, I, out of all those, you know, so many people think about all the great golf courses in Philadelphia, and I always feel like Rolling Green is forgotten. I do, too. Rolling Green is forgotten because, you know, you have such huge names, such, you know, historical golf courses that people forget about Rolling Green. But Rolling Green is one of those that I've always said, if I get the call, you know, on, a, you know, hey, can you join me? Thursday afternoon. Drop everything. Rolling Greens is a place <laughs> you always go spot. to and you have a great, great experience. How about that? Phil Philadelphia's a tough town to, uh, for golf courses to really stand out, right? Wow. What you're saying about the, the, the company. Correct. And, you know, uh, Donald Ross left his mark here. Okay. Tillinghast left his mark here. George Thomas left his mark here. Correct. William Flynn, like, really left his mark here. Cast a white net. <laughs> you know, when you look, you know, you, you grew up in Huntington Valley. And, uh, you know, that probably, for me, is one of my favorite Flint golf courses. And For sure. You know, I, I mentioned during the show in, in talking to Wayne Morrison about how he, you know, he, they called him the uh, nature faker. That was one of the names of, uh, for William Flynn, that he would take a course, and if he developed, like, you know, the topography different than what was there by nature, uh, he tried to blend it in as much as possible so you wouldn't notice that. And the thing about Huntington Valley and the greens, you know, you always break to the valley, right? That's the, and, and you can't believe it sometimes, right? You cannot believe it's going to go left to right as opposed to right to left. Well, and more, and more to that, from my experience having grown up and played thousands of rounds there, you know, if you have a 30-foot putt that's across one of the greens where you know it, and, and, and there's no mystery, it's breaking right to left or left to right, it breaks five, six, seven feet. feet. You come anywhere else that are great <laughs> courses, they don't break, you know, I, you end up overreading by double because at Honey Valley, it's just so much extra break near the hole that, um, but, you know, that's one of a number of things that, that in I don't think there's any other golf course I've played where that comes into play more than in Huntington Valley. All right, we'll be back. Thank you, gentlemen. More with Wayne Morrison and William Flynn coming up next here on Inside Golf. Designed by Donald Ross, Lulu Country Club is one of the premier private golf courses in Montgomery County. This classic 18-hole course boasts a new state-of-the-art clubhouse with many amenities for members to enjoy. Members are invited to play in events, tournaments, and enjoy guest privileges. For more information, contact membership at lulucc.com. Welcome back. Inside Golf Now continues as we wrap up our discussion of golf course architect William Flynn, his relationship to Philadelphia and elsewhere with Wayne Morrison, who knows more about William Flynn than anybody in the world. Uh, by the way, we're at Marion. Everybody knows the wicker baskets instead of the flags on uh, each hole. And guess what? William Flynn was the guy that started that. Tell us about it. Yeah, William Flynn uh, uh, has the patent on the baskets. They were implemented in 1915. They weren't there when the course first opened. So they had regular flags. Regular flags on bamboo poles, Flynn's wicker baskets on a, a metal pole. He thought it would be more easily seen from a distance than a flag that if the wind was blowing at you, you couldn't see the flag. So uh, it was a sort of happenstance that uh, you lost wind direction and wind intensity by just having a basket. But the novelty will never go away. No, it's here to stay, I'm sure. <laughs> um, famous venues. He's number two on the list of architects when it comes to courses that the USGA has used for various events. So, yeah, he's had 100 USGA events have been pl played on his courses. Another nine or so are scheduled to be played. So out of 51 courses that exist today, he's had uh, over 100 events. Donald Ross, who's had over 400 courses, has had a little bit more than 100. A fellow like Tillinghass that's had... 200 courses has had about 70. So Flynn is, like you said, 
the quality, not quantity. Is most of his work in Philadelphia more than any other specific geographical region? That's a good point. He, his courses are sort of geographically located. There's 17 in the Philadelphia area. And they're all fantastic venues. There's not a weak, weak one among them. In fact, uh, playing gap matches, I would always go to want to play the away matches, and I'd say, who designed the golf course? And most of the members that I was playing against would go, I don't know. And it's know. a Flynn course. Who cares? Yeah. And it would, it would turn out that they were William Flynn's. How do people get more information on getting your book on William Flynn? But if they want to email me at wsmorrison at hotmail.com, I'd be happy to... Uh, to uh, respond and, and see that they get the book. I can either send it digitally or send it by a flash drive. Do you go around giving talks on William Flynn? Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I gave a talk in Sweden last <laughs> year on that. And uh, Chicago, yeah. Uh, what, did Annika Sorenstam ask you to come over? She or? didn't, but Henrik Stenson did. Did he really? Yeah. How about and, uh, that? Speaking of name dropping. Yeah, well. Philadelphia Gop doesn't realize, most of us, how important Philadelphia was to the development of great golf courses in this country. Wayne, thank you. Harry, a pleasure. Pleasure to be here at Murrian and the history of William Flynn here and beyond. I'm Harry Donahue. We'll see you next time here on Inside Golf. The 26th season of Inside Golf is presented by Destination Monco Golf. Your next golf getaway is in Valley Forge in Montgomery County, Pennsylvania. Visit valleyforge.org. By the First Tee Greater Philadelphia, the first tee not only helps young men and women become better golfers, but most important, better people. Get involved. Visit firstteephiladelphia.org. By the Philadelphia Association of Golf Course Superintendents, a community of professionals enhancing the game of golf since 1925. Make sure you thank your golf course superintendent today. By the Golf Association of Philadelphia, GAP, celebrating amateur golf since 1897. By Jersey Man and Philly Man Magazine, a digital publication and private business network. Read the current issue free at jerseymanmagazine.com. By the Haverford Trust Company. For life's must-haves, there's Haverford. And by Inside Golf's partner since 1998, the Philadelphia PGA section, the experts in the game and business of golf.